Well, hello everyone. Today we're going to present on how I can get my reports out of Epicor. This presentation will focus mainly on Epicor 10.1 and first I'm going to start as a presentation and then I'll show examples in Epicor 10.1. I'm just going to be showing a few examples of the different options for getting reports out of Epicor. This is not intended to be all inclusive. So on this slide, we show a number of different ways you can access your reports and your data in Epicor 10.1. We'll go through some information about each point listed on the following slides. So for example, one of the ways you can get your reports out is using a URL and a menu item. You can also get reports using report data definitions in Epicor. You can run a business activity query report to get reports. You can set up any of those options as a favorite in your Epicor software. You can also set up any of your SSRS reports as a favorite in your browser, such as Internet Explorer. You can export your data from a business activity query to create your own reports in Excel, for example, or whatever other system where you can use a CSV file or an XML file. And then the last example we'll show will be using a form customization to open your report. So this first example shows how using a URL and a menu item is achieved. First you need to have an SSRS report created, an already existing one, or you can create a new one. Then you would create a new menu ID in Epicor Menu Maintenance. As you can see here, we can have the program type be a URL link, the icon is a URL, and then the actual program will be the path that you would use to get to your SSRS report. It will be the actual URL. This option works for SSRS reports created with queries, stored procedures and any options where the person running the report will know the parameters required. It does not work very well with the report data definition reports or the business activity query reports since these require a table GUID, a globally unique identifier. Another option to get your reports out of Epicor is using the report data definitions. And those use either an existing SSRS report or you can create a new one and, and or copy change an existing one. These rely on the data coming from the RDD, which is the report data definition in Epicor, and they utilize report styles. So in this example we can see when you set up the menu item the program type is a menu item and the icon is a report and then the program for the already created report data definitions in Epicor will be in this format for example erp.ui report and then the name of the report.dll when you look in the report styles, you'll see where the report data definition is. In this case, job travel, trav, job, T-R-A-V. And then you will see the report location directly below that, which shows the relative path for the report in your SSRS portal. Because the report type is SQL server reporting. It's an SSRS report. And the lower right corner of the screen here shows an example of what you'll see if you were to put in the URL to get to that job traveler. As mentioned, it would request a table GUI ID. If you would run your report in Epicor, it would automatically create a table GUI ID and you would see it in System Monitor on the Reports tab. And then mostly you would use the um, SSRS portal when you're testing or changing a report 
you would need to grab that table GUI ID to be able to test with it. Next we show the example of running a business activity query report. Again you can use an existing SSRS report or create or copy a new uh, an existing one to create a new one. These reports rely on the data coming from a business activity query and they include options, sorts, filters. On the right hand upper picture you can see the program type is the BAQ report, the icons of report, and the actual program is a generic um, UI report dot BAQ report dot DLL. On the left hand side we can see the time report used as an example and we can see as we mentioned there's report options, there's report filters, and if a sort was used that would be one of the two options listed in your report style to have a different report style based on a different sort. In the lower right hand corner is an example of the GUID ID that I was talking about and as mentioned that would be used for testing your reports. You can also set up your report as a favorite in Epicor. Again you can use an existing report, create a brand new report, or copy and change an existing SSRS report. To add your favorite in Epicor, you would create a favorites group or use an existing favorites group and then you would actually create your favorite. And the main couple of pictures for those are shown here. On the right hand side is adding a favorites group and on the left hand side is creating your favorite. You can also set up your report as a favorite in your browser you probably are familiar with how to do that, but for those of you who aren't, you can again use an existing SSRS report, create a new one, or copy and change an existing one to create a new one. You create a favorites group or use an existing favorites group, and then you would create your favorite. Again, those work best with those reports that are not PAQ reports or report data definition reports because you would need the GUID, the globally unique identifier, in order to work with any favorites in your browser. Another option is to export your data from a business activity query. You can choose the output to be either XML or CSV data and these rely on your data coming from a business activity query and often users will export this type of file and open them in Excel. BAQ exports are not really reports but the data that's used for the reports if needed. You'll get column names and comma separated values if you choose CSV or XML data if you choose XML. Then both of these can easily be opened into Excel for creating a report from that data. So our last example is going to be using a form customization to open your reports. Again, you can use an existing SSRS report or create a new one or copy and change an existing report. You would use custom C# -sharp code to work with your reports. With the custom code, you can decide on some options for the output format. For example, you could output to PDF, Word, or Excel. So now I'll go ahead and show these few examples using the 10.1 software. The first example we mentioned was using a URL and a menu item. So in this um, menu I show that we created a custom pack slip and we have the URL and it shows the exact path to get to the URL. So I will show you that example for the custom pack slip. If I paste that URL in my browser, I get to the custom pack slip. And then I can click on there 
and run that if I know a pack slip number. And actually, I think this example report we have is just um, an in process report, so we probably will not get, yeah, we did not get data, but it gives you the idea of using a URL to get to the report, and then you'll be able to put in your information for a parameter and view your report. Our next example is a report data definition example, which we have the job traveler as that example. And if we look at that in our menu maintenance, we can see, as I mentioned before, what the program type and the icon and the program are. And most often the canned reports from Epicor will have some of the filters and selections, etc., and a, a different report style utilized and you can just go ahead and run these but these will create a good ID. Oh, I have to pick a job, sorry. So in a minute or two that'll come up but we can also go ahead and look at the report style for the job traveler just to show what I was talking about there. We can see it's an SSRS report. The report type is SQL Server Reporting, and the data definition is Job Traveler. And this is the relative path reports Job Traveler Traveler. I also have that open that we can see it. This would be the actual report. If we open that up, though, it's going to ask for a table GUID ID. Epicor handles that in the background, sending the table GUID ID to the system monitor and hooking it up with your SSRS report so that you can get the results in an actual report without needing to have the GUID ID. But now that we created the GUID ID, let's look in system monitor. There's our system monitor. And we at the end here is our file name which has the GUI ID all the way at the end. And so you just need the numbers and the letters, not the beginning part that says report database colon, etc. So you would type that into your GUI ID or copy and paste it in there and you would get the same exact report. That would be for testing. So our next example is running a, a business activity query report. The time report is an example of a business activity query report. It has the report options and filter summary. So you can choose different dates and we're going to run it from the beginning of the year because we don't have much data in our test system. And um, the filter, you can choose all the different options that you'd like. We're going to select all employees because there aren't that many and we don't have much data in our training database. If there were a sort option for this business activity query report, you would have more than one report style available. And I'm going to go ahead and print preview and we'll see the results of this actual BAQ report. And again that would use a table GUID ID so you know if you created a shortcut on your browser it's not much help unless you have you know need to do it for testing. Um, the next demonstration we're going to do is setting up your reports as a favorite in Epicor. So I listed, or I already did the steps to add a favorite tile, but if you would like to, what you do is just basically click on this down arrow to reveal it, and then the add tile option, and then you can pick that you want to create a new 
tile group and walk through the wizard. It's pretty self-explanatory. But I already did that with the, my reports. So now I'm going to go ahead and add a favorite to my reports. And the way you do that is going into your menu items. And then you would pick any report that you want to go ahead and put on your favorites tile. So let's see, let's look at a couple for shipping maybe. So let's put the scheduled shipments on there. So you right click once you have it highlighted and then that will reveal these icons again. And the one on the farthest right here says add to favorites. And then it will say always use the current company in sight or you can choose other options for other companies. And then it asks you which favorites will it belong to. I want it to belong to my reports. And that's basically as easy it is to create your favorite. And there's my reports and we can see now scheduled shipments is in that favorites group. The next option we had was to show setting your report as a favorite in your browser. So let's see the pack slip would be a good one to set as your as a favorite in your browser. So all you would do is like any other favorites in your browser, you click on the little um, star that says add to favorites in Internet Explorer. It's different in other browsers, but we'll say add to favorites. And then you have the option to create a new folder and I'll call it demo. Create it and then that's what it's going to call the name, but you can change the name if you want to also. And so I'll say add. So now I'll close it, but if I open a new window with favorites, demo, and my pack slip, there we go. It goes right to that report and tries to run it. And we'll see the same results. So that's how you can set it up in your favorites. The last example we'll have is our example of using custom code to open your report. In this case we have some custom code that has these little orange buttons to print our pack slip and it's going to go ahead and print. So there we go. There's my custom pack slip opened with um, the custom code to render it as a PDF file which also could be done as a Word or Excel file. So that's our last example running reports in Epicor. So now you should know more about where your reports reside and how they are created in the background in the Epicor 10.1 system. Go ahead and test any of these out that you would like to using your test pilot or training environment while the information is fresh in your mind. Start simple and build as you learn. Thank you for attending this demonstration and be sure to check out our YouTube channel for this and previous videos.